Hello everybody and welcome to the 2018 Finnish Nationals at the Tampere Disc Golf Center in Tampere, Finland. I'm Eagle McMahon and I'm joined by two-time Finnish champion Pasi Koivu. How are you today? I'm feeling good. I didn't play that well, but I'm glad to be here and I get to see how these professional players manage to play the course. This course is a beast of its own. I've only played it once and I can already say that it's probably the top five toughest courses in the world. On the lead card today we have Vino Makala, Leo Pieronen, Janne Herosmaki, and Saku Poikonen. So this fun fact for everybody, Finnish nationals, you have to be Finnish in order to play this event, otherwise I would have uh, joined in. So starting off, hole one, par four, 790 feet, 241 meters, this actually plays as the toughest hole on the course. It's absolutely brutal. You have out of bounds on both sides of the fairway. And I, I remember looking at the scores while the tournament was going on and the, probably the average score is like, I don't know, it was playing definitely over par. I saw a few nines, tens, so it's a brutal hole to start your round by. Yeah, there was only one birdie on the uh, final day. And this was the only day there was some wind. So that made uh, playing a bit more difficult. And the average score on this hole was 5.2. So think about that, it's a par four. Teeing off first, Vino Makala. I've ha I played with him last year at the European Open. He's a young player for uh, Prodigy Disc and he has so much talent. He has like a really well-rounded game, and he'll be looking to get his first Finnish Nationals right now. Yeah, Leo has been playing on this level quite long. This is he throwing a, I guess it's a MD2, I would say. He's a two-time Finnish champion already, and he has won the European Championship already in 2016 if I remember right. Yeah, Leo doesn't get as much credit I think he should. He is definitely um, a giant in the European disc golf scene and it's definitely someone to contend with. And here we have Janne Hirsimäki, who's the old guy in this group. He's a mentally very good player and before the tournament I said that the winner will be kind of a major at the uh, taking the challenge of the course. So he's he's there for a reason. Absolutely, and Jan is one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. Super genuine and just a pleasure to be around. This is Saku Poikinen. I'm not too familiar with his name. I had the pleasure of watching him uh, in rounds prior and you'll see throughout the round that he has a giant forehand. I believe he's throwing a star boss here. And this play is really not too bad. There's no out of bounds on the right side there, so he'll find himself safe. But it'll kind of put him in a weird position to wrap around the corner. Yeah, Vaina is here in the perfect spot for the first shot. Let's see how this goes, because this is not a piece of cake of a throw, because the OB is all the way on both sides of this, uh, this hole. Yeah, you definitely want to throw something with a lot of control just to make sure you land in the middle. Perhaps something a little lower speed. And that shot, I believe it's safe, but just a small kick like that can can have you at the edge of your seat. Yeah, Saku was a little bit on that right side, kind of forcing him to pitch over. It doesn't look like the spotter is sure of whether it's safe or, or in bounds. Yeah, on this hole you'd, you'd be happy if you get a four, so they all are doing pretty fine, except that I guess that's okay. Uh, but yeah, you, you get a four on this one and you'll be happy. Absolutely, even though it says a par four, I don't, there was probably less than five birdies the entire tournament on this hole. Saku with a wow. great shot. So Saku has now thrown uh, three forehands. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, this is uh, first time for me also seeing Saku play. So I'm looking forward. I hear, I've heard that he has a lot of power. That's what I know. 
believe that was Leo looking for his birdie there. Yone as well. But being that close for your par is, you're very happy with that. Vino with a long look. Yane with the par. Saku with a bogey. Which really isn't too bad. You shouldn't get down on yourself for a bogey on this hole. No, definitely no. It's really incredible what they've done with this course. I remember walking it last year and this is one of the first courses of its kind just to be specifically made for disc golf. Hole two, par three, 407 feet, 124 meters. And tracing back to what I said, if you look at this green, it is, a, it's two tiered. You have a landing area and then the basket propped up. And I don't really, I haven't seen too many courses where you see a feature such as that. So it's really special. Yeah, the green is one of the most beautiful ones that I've seen and the tee shot seems easy but I didn't even get to the 10 meter circle on any round counting my practice rounds and competition rounds so let's see if they can do it better you gotta throw it hard and extremely left this looks good yeah it's a really difficult shot and I'm really not sure what the wind is doing here it doesn't seem like it's in their favor because they're throwing super tight lines but still not getting far enough left you really want to throw something maybe a little bit less overstable to really get that glide to the left. Yeah, that's pretty common tee shot that Janne just did. It will bring you a outside of the circle chance, but that's all you're going to get. Sokko with a backhand, and he made it work pretty good. I think he pro might have the, the closest look out of anyone in the group. Yane trying to give it a small run. Pretty good right there for his par. Vino missing a little bit left. Let's see if Leo can make it. Wow! Ooh, yeah. That's really what you're looking for to start with this, to start your round with, um, with a big putt like that. That can add momentum to what would be a really tense day. I mean, fi finals are, are no joke, so any bit of, any bit of help like that is, is really great. Yeah, getting birdie on this hole is, I can say it's an extra birdie. Whoa, vinyl with a hand on the, on the banner. I haven't seen that strategy before. So we'll have three pars and one birdie. Leo gets a stroke on everyone. The third hole, par three, 387 feet, 118 meters. This hole bends slightly to the right. Ideally, you're throwing uh, either a hard mid-range or a fairway driver that just kind of turns to the right. A forehand works as well, but you have to push it really straight and keep it, keep it from fading out too early. Maybe a par three, but it's not something that's uh, necessarily easy birdie. You can find a lot of trouble on this hole. Yeah, if you go to the right, there's a rough that gives you only bogeys or doubles, so you just want to miss it. This looks good, and I guess there's going to be at least two forehands. Saku and Janne are probably gonna play with the, with the four. Vino, that looks good, but it's turning a little bit early because as you see it finished just to the right over there. Yanni opting for the forehand. That's pushing straight. It falls in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, that should be an easy three. Saku with a star boss. It's pushing straight, that needs to fade. And it gets through, and he's made it in the gap. I'm pretty sure that's a green hit. Just a 
smooth forehand approach. Bullseye. Maybe trying to give it a little bit of a lob. Just really thinking about getting this par. Didn't look like anyone had too bad of a position here. No, they just got over the worst rough. So Leo and Vaino made it look pretty easy. There you oh, go. That's a great part right there by Sanko. Looks so casual, just dead center. Oh, Yana doing a lefty putt. Ooh, switching it up, nice. We'll have three pars, one birdie by Sapu. Par four, hole four, 860 feet, 262 meters. This is a true par four. Uh, if any of you watch the Kona Peach Day coverage, uh, you'd, you're probably familiar with a lot of the holes. You have one good drive and then just a putter approach. Not really this hole. You have to throw a really good drive to put yourself in position and then either throw a huge turnover or a huge sweeping sidearm and you're lucky if you even have a putt. So it's an absolutely beautiful two shot par four. Yeah, I dig this hole quite a lot. This is probably my favorite hole on this course because you have to throw a hard backhand on the tee shot and then you get to throw a hard forehand to manage to get yourself to the green. So it actually has, it's it's challenging you many ways. And just the overall shape of the fairway, just a, a real nice curving, curving um, strip to where you have to place your shot, focus on not getting off the fairway just overall really picturesque disc golf hole. And if I remember correctly, there is a, there's kind of a right to left win. So these, uh, these shots are getting pulled a lot further left than normal, which is, is really good for the players. Yeah, they get a little lift you can see in the middle of the flight. Yane looks so smooth. It never looks like he throws hard, but he, he knows how to play his angles and just put his discs in the right places. Jan has about 145 meters to the basket, so he has to throw hard if he wants to get there, and this looks good. Get some of that wind helping. They'll be on the left side of the green, maybe just outside the circle. Yeah, that's pretty much pin high, so he did well. Leo with a standstill and just getting slapped around by that wind. But that's pushing. Oh my gosh, that's an incredible shot. That was a very nice shot. The wind did some tricks, but Leo managed to managed to do it well. The thing you'll notice with Leo, he's super balanced in his throw. It almost looks the same when he's throwing forehand and backhand. He keeps everything super level and is very deliberate with his angles, which I find some inspiration from. Vino with a big turnover shot that's getting slapped down. Looks like it pulls a little bit left. Will be pin high, but still a ways out. Probably some trees to contend with. Yeah, something you should know about the course, the front nine is a bit easier. So these are actually the holes where you want to get your birdies if, you, if you're if you going to get some birdies to your round. So it's not easy to play this course under par or even. Yeah, in this final day, I mean, having the wind really makes it a challenge. Yeah, Yane just outside the circle. I'm not sure what kind of wind he was contending with there, but leaves it just a little bit short. Leo almost with a bullseye hit birdie. That's that's really good on that hole. So Leo is already two down this, this round. He's He's showing the other guys that he wants to get the title third time. He means business and just having that experience under his belt, I bet you he has the, comp the huge competitive edge over everyone else. All right, hole five, par four, 728 feet, 222 meters. 
Ideally, you want to be a sidearm player on this hole, but you can make it work if not. If you see, uh, from the tee pad, it kind of pulls left and then brings it back right. I personally really like this hole. Uh, you really want to throw a forehand flex shot off the tee and then a forehand approach, but even if you don't have it, you can play fairway driver, slight hyzer out in the landing zone and then pull up straight and hyzer to the basket. As you see, Leo's lining up, I believe, uh, a DD forehand. Yeah, he's no about throwing the one DD he has in his back and pretty much always on forehand. And pretty much perfect right there. You can't really ask for more than that. Saku must like this hole. Oh, yeah. Oh, this is drifting. Yeah, it looks like it just pulls a little bit too far left. Vino just trying to pitch a hyzer out of the fairway, but... That's looking high. Yeah, it seemed like there was a right to left win there, and it just kind of really pulls it left. Yeah, he's showing that he has all the shots. That's even pushing straight. I don't believe Vino was out of bounds, but there is out of bounds over there, so... Yeah, I think he was safe, but he didn't make the hole easy for him. I'm not trying to bend the shot right. It's looking good. This falls out a little bit left, just outside the circle. This this green is actually really guarded by trees, so I can't say that Vino will have a great look, but I could be wrong. And there you see how the rough is on this course. This was the first time someone pitched it out, but in four rounds I saw that a lot. There's not much you can do, do when you get into a bush like that. Absolutely, and that's, that's mostly because this course is so new. It really hasn't uh, had the opportunity to get discs thrown into the rough, people walking in there, so it's all super thick still. Saku plays it a little bit low. Leo will have a chance to throw to the basket. Gets too far turned over. And if you see, I'm there and I almost get hit by a shot. So I knew he threw a PD2 because I looked at the disc when I was standing there. Uh, Janne, nice low forehand with a huge wind bounce. Oh, and that's part. Yeah, Janne knows how to throw that shot. He has extremely good balance on his shots and he can throw very well to 120 meters with no no chance to miss the shot it seems like layoff for a long birdie look just put pitching it up one egg is par yeah he's okay with the par yeah see there's not much of a line here and the wind doesn't make it any easier Yane with a good par for throwing in the rough on his on his tee shot. Saku with a bogey. Leo with a par. Moving on to hole six, par three, 318 feet, 97 meters. Uh, this this is. Uh, propped up on this mound here. It's a kind of an interesting shape. On the right side of the mound, it's uh, pretty steep, but as you go a little bit further left, it kind of flattens out. So ideally, um, if there's no wind, you'd see a lot of spike hyzers on this hole, but I think we'll see um, some straighter shots just to kind of keep, keep the discs out of the wind. Yeah, the shape of the heel asks you to throw a righty forehand or a lefty hyzer because you can get pretty close by skipping from the lower side of the hill. And that's how I played it, I did it pretty well. But the wind is playing tricks on you because this is slightly uphill, so you get a way bigger fade than you were expecting. Yane with a beautiful looking straight shot. Oh, that hits up on the hill. Oh, and that's... He, he did all he could do. He threw a great shot, but got unlucky and 
and rolled away. Yeah, that's what happens if, if you if you throw there. Probably 50% of the time you stay there and then you roll when you don't have that luck. So Saku will be at the base of the hill, which is not an easy putt, especially with the elevation, the wind ripping. Vino brings it a little bit too far to left. He'll find himself in a difficult spot. Leo playing smart golf. Really shouldn't do anything else from there. Yeah, that's an all ghost spot. Vino is also pitching just out and taking his par. Yeah. I'd be surprised to see Yanni run this. No. Nope. Just wants his three. Actually, if you're this close to the hill, you can... Oh, look at that. Wow. Yeah, I was just saying, you can run the putt because you're throwing that much uphill. Because mm -hmm. if you miss the putt, it's just gonna drop down and leave you maybe four or five meters. That was a really good putt, though, because it seems like he had a headwind. If he didn't hit the basket, that was going to be blown back right at him. Mm -hmm. Leo with a little bit of a tester for a par. Final with a par. So three pars, one birdie by Saku. Hole seven, par four, 725 feet, 221 meters. This uh, this hole reminds me of hole four in a way. It's a similar tee shot, but uh, you bring a little bit more of a technical aspect off the tee pad. You might want to throw either a control driver or the disc that you feel really confident uh, putting in a, in a good position. Playing it down to the left and then on the second shot, you'll be contending with this lake here. So throwing a big hyzer, making sure you get far left, but not too far left because there is out of balance behind the basket. So there's actually a really demanding par four, but it's one that's not too far. So you'll definitely be wanting a birdie on this. Yeah, this is one of the easier ones on this course, but if this was on any other course, this would be a tough one. It's a big skip. And he might have a look from there. Yeah, he missed that tree, so he might get a full swing from there. Leo playing it high, and you can see the wind is really swinging him left. And that's a great shot. He's super far down the fairway, and they'll have base. He'll be looking probably throw that same exact shot again for his approach. Yane looks like maybe getting a little bit more distance on his oh and a good roll yeah at least with the roll they are all in a good spot Saku is probably gonna have a tough approach but Leo and Jan are just where you want to be Vaino pretty much right in the spot yep. no complaints there yeah he's going to take a run up so this was not that bad Oh, but that's flipping. That's got to hit something. And I believe it falls safe. Yeah, it's not that bad. He's going to take an easy four from there. Leo, I'm not sure who he's throwing. Maybe like a PD2, FD3. And that's really awesome. Yeah, as you can see, the ground at the green is very soft. So you're going to stay pretty much where you land. So it's not that frightening because you're not going to get any skips. Wow, another great shot. Yeah, just like that. That was really close to going in. Let's see if Yane can replicate what those what the young guys are doing. Gets it up. Oh, and he shows them that he has more experience than both of them combined. Okay, and Saku goes to forehand from this distance. That's inspiring. Yeah, just uh, playing to your strengths. You can tell he's a forehand dominant player, so it's basically a dealer's choice right there. Vino with a good birdie. Vino has one of the strongest strongest putts that I know. He putts very hard, and that that's just telling you he has some hunger to win win this competition. Absolutely. Leo tapping in his birdie, Saku with a par, and Yane with the bullseye hit birdie. 
three birdies on that hole for Mark Hart. Yeah, that's well done with this wind. Hole eight, par three, 249 feet, 76 meters. I'm gonna go as far as to say that this is the easiest hole in the course. It's almost like a mirage when you see it. You don't believe it's real just because it's just a, a little putter shot right in front of you. So you really have to take advantage of this and uh, throw your straightest disc and put it under the basket. Yeah, this is the easiest hole and this plays tricks on some people because the whole course is so tough and then you get a hole like this where you think you, you just have to get this. Let's see how they can do it. This looks pretty good. So Leo's throwing a S line P2 here and that's, that's good enough. Don't know what Jan is throwing, but it seems to be a putter of sorts. Contending with the trees a little bit, but that's, that's a bullseye hit right there. Yeah, that's what you want to get when it's windy like this. Get a bullseye putt for yourself. Vino ops for... Oh! That's a little... That's... That leaves him a little bit meat on the bone right there. Yeah, I wonder what's going in Vaino's head because he was leading by one before this round and now he's back quite a lot already. Vaino really wants to hit this right now just to make sure he gets the birdie. Oof. As you can see, it's not easy to play in this wind. You cannot predict what's going to happen. And it's really just a testament to this course. I mean, this, as you were saying, this is kind of like just a, a mind game, this hole. And if you don't, if you don't birdie it, that kind of throws you for a loop. Oh yeah, and if you're gonna take a par on this hole, it's just one throw, but it gets your mind big time. Leo not letting this pole play any tricks on him. Claiming his birdie like he deserves. Vino with a par. Yane from the bullseye. Birdie putt. Hole 9, par 4, 738 feet, 225 meters. This, this tee shot is basically you can throw maybe a fairway driver, putter, mid-range, whatever you want really just to make sure that you get out into the fairway. Then it plays to preferably a forehand or uh, a long turnover shot. Uh, it's really difficult because if you're off your line at all on this hole, you'll find out of bounds on the right. Uh, find the rough since the tee shot's so tight. But for the ambitious ones, there is an opportunity to go over top in the tee. See what Leo does here. Oh, he throws in the middle and gets clear from the toughest part, I guess. So he's looking at a long forehand and a birdie. So it seems like these guys are just opting to throw, I believe this to be a mid-range, just uh, making sure you get out and give yourself a look. If I know maybe has a driver in his hand here. Still with a lot of control, he hits the left side, and he'll fall into the rough. Yeah, the biggest challenge at this hole is the first, let's say 50 meters. If you get over that, you're doing fine. I think Saku went over top here. Yeah, do a forehand, so I think he'll find himself on the right side. Vino on his second shot. Spike Heiser, looks to be a right to left win, so that's gonna push it far left. And there he goes. Yeah, from rough to rough. Is Leo in position to attack the green here? That was quite far. I would say that's 150 meters, but he wow. just has that. That was a very nice shot because you can't see the basket from where he was. And he did it standing still too. There's not many people in the world who are able to do that. But 
it seems like Yane is one of those people. Another standhill, standstill approach forehand. Coming up a little bit short, but I think that's uh, maybe just inside the circle right there. Vino has no choice but to just pitch out. And Saku should do this pretty well. He has a good forehand and overstable discs. Yeah. Just in the blue side. Nice. And now Vaino is throwing his fourth while Leo is putting for birdie. So he's going to fall a bit back from uh, Leo. That was a good recovery shot from Vino though, just making sure he stops the bleeding from a tough hole. Yane connecting. Birdie putt. Yane is playing pretty well this, this round. Yeah, he's starting to make a move actually. Yane is like one of those players who you play with and then you're surprised that he played like maybe 10 down on a course, but it didn't seem that well. Yeah, just... uh. That veteran knowledge, just uh, kind of chipping away, playing your game plan, and letting it happen. So that was the front nine of the Finnish Nationals. Leo up by five right now, or no, six. So he he has a pretty good cushion right now. So as you can see, Leo, 44% green hits. All the other guys are falling a little be bit behind, but Yane is still really strong. 100% inside the circle for all these guys, which is super great, what you want to see. And now our next video is from the back nine. That will be much tougher, so let's see how it will work out. Leo got a good minus five, so let's see how far that takes him. Yeah, the front half of the course is, like you're saying, it's where you want to score, but the back nines just pretty much stay alive and any birdie is just a is bonus. All right, guys. Well, we said it. So thank you for joining the front nine. And uh, it's heating up here. And I think we're going to see a pretty awesome finish from uh, these guys. So I'll catch you guys on the back nine. See you.